In this video we're going to discuss MPLS or multi-protocol label switching. So we've got two CE routers, CE1 and CE2 connected to PE1. CE1 lost its neighbor relationship to PE1 when we removed the IP address, but notice the IP address of this router is 172.16.1.2 CE2, which is the green router, has exactly the same IP address configured. But here it's okay to do that because they're in separate VRFs. Now CE routers don't know anything about MPLS. So as an example, this router can ping 172.16.1.1 and so can this router, but they are pinging separate interfaces in separate VRFs on PE1. So let's do a debug IP ICMP on both of these routers. And what I'll do now is do a ping on the PE router so that we can see which router displays the output. So here's CE1, here's CE2, and what I'll do is use the blue VRF to ping 172.16.1.1, that should actually be 1.2, so we ping the customer network. You can see in the output that CE1 responded to the pings. Now if we ping the same IP address but use the green VRF, CE2 responds. So again, blue, green. Notice different routers are responding to the ping. The traffic is going out of a different interface. We don't have 172.16.1 configured in the global IP routing table, and it's not available in the global routing table. We've got two interfaces configured with the same IP address, but because they're in different VRFs, this implementation works. It's again, as an analogy, similar to VLANs, but it's happening at layer three rather than at layer two. Now to fully complete this configuration, we need to set up a BGP on the PE routers and either do redistribution between the CEs and the PEs or run BGP on the CEs and PEs. So I'll quickly set that up. Again, you don't need to know this for the CCNA. BGP is only gonna be used between PE routers it's not going to be used on the P routers. The P routers essentially have a very basic configuration. They're only running OSPF and they only know about the core network. They don't know about customer networks. So I'm going to enable BGP, specify our neighbor, specify our neighbor rather, which is PE2, I'm gonna specify that the update source is the loopback zero interface that's required. And now I'm gonna create an address family, which is VPN v4. This is a 96 bit network address rather than a 32 bit address. So we have to do some configuration here, like send communities. Basically we have to send some extra attributes from one router to another. So do show run pipe section BGP. This is the configuration of BGP on the one router. And then I'll do something similar on the second PE router. So router BGP 100 neighbor, in this case is gonna be 4444, remote AES is gonna be 100, neighbor 4444, updates, update source loopback zero. We can see the neighbor relationship has come up. Address family is gonna be VPN v4, neighbor, Activate, you have to manually activate the neighbor within 
the VPNv4 address family. And we're going to send communities. In this case, it's extended communities. So show IP BGP neighbor. So here's the command, show IP BGP neighbors. We can see that we have a neighbor relationship to 5.5.5.5. In other words, PE2. The remote autonomous system is 100 and it's using internal BGP. So show run will show us the configuration. Here's our VRF configuration, which we did previously. And scrolling down, we can see our BGP configuration. So we've configured BGP with Autonomous System 100. We have configured a neighbor relationship to PE2 using this command, and we've told the router to use the loopback for communication with PE2. In the VPN v4 address family, we've activated the neighbor relationship. That happens automatically for IP version 4, but doesn't for VPN v4. So we have to manually activate the neighbor relationship, and then we have to send extended communities. These are required for the advertisement of labels from one neighbor to another. So show IP BGP summary shows us the IP version 4 neighbor relationship in summary format. Notice the state is established. We could see that once again by looking at detailed information. The neighbor relationship to 5.5.5.5 .5 .5 .5 is established. But this shows us the information in summary format. Show IP BGP VPN v4 all. And we have a lot of options here, but let's go for summary. Shows us the VPN v4 neighbor relationship. And notice the state is also established. So we have both IP version 4 and VPN v4 neighbor relationships. We could look at the IP version 4 neighbor in more detail using show IP BGP neighbor. And again, there's the neighbor relationship. And then we could use the VPN v4 option to look at the neighbor relationship established through VPN v4. So show IP BGP VPN v4 all neighbors. Neighbor relationship is established. At this point, we've configured core OSPF. We've configured BGP, both for IP version 4 and VPN v4. Now we need to configure a routing protocol to the customer. And in this example, I'm going to use OSPF, but I'm going to use a different process number. For core OSPF, we've used process number one, but now we're going to use process number two, and we're going to specify a VRF, which in this case is blue. I'm going to specify a router ID. Notice what happens if I use a router ID in the global IP routing table. We're told that we can't use that. So again, show IP route VRF blue shows us the interfaces in the blue VRF. So when we configure OSPF for the blue VRF, we need to specify an IP address in that VRF, such as the following. Then I'm going to go on to interface gigabit 01. This is the interface in the blue VRF, as we can see over here. And I'm going to type IP OSPF. In this case, we need to specify process two, area zero. So what we've done is configure OSPF globally. We've configured BGP. So what we've done is configure OSPF globally and also configure OSPF in the blue VRF. In this example, rather than using network commands, I've enabled OSPF directly on the interface. Both of those methods work. So show IP OSPF neighbor. 
we see neighbor relationships in the global routing table show IP OSPF to neighbors. Notice we see a neighbor relationship to the CE router. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.